All right, guys, got another video for y'all. Um, okay, so in the last one, in the how to set up conditional statements, we got our um, conditional statement stuff set up. Let's go ahead and open that and take a look at it. So this is our challenge. We're gonna go over some of the stuff that we can do to help solve this thing. Let's see, there's my conditional statement training. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. All right, when you play this, it gives you some instructions and it tells you that it wants you to program this asteroid so that whenever it goes off of the edge, that it wants you to tell the asteroid to move to the opposite edge. So basically just keeping the asteroid on the screen, whichever side it exits on. Okay, so it tells us that we, we need to edit the code in the asteroid. So let's start off by taking a look at the code in the asteroid and see if we can find some stuff to help us out here. <clears throat> okay, so if we take a look at the asteroid, we have speed, movement x speed, movement y speed, rotation. So these right here, these are all for how the asteroid moves and rotates. And then um, we have some boundaries that are left bound, right bound, top bound, bottom bound, and they're all empty. They all say null. There's nothing in them. Then we have a pick a random direction. And it says it calls a function called pick random direction. If we take a look down here, what this does is it just picks a random direction, rotation, and allows it where whenever we push play on the game the asteroid just picks a random direction that it goes and starts moving that direction and then we have this function it says function movement calculation and this just takes the speed and keeps it going and keeps it rotating so once it gets a speed in a direction it's just going to keep moving in that direction because this function right here is going to get called over and over and over and it's just going to keep moving it in a certain direction. Alright, let's see if we can figure out some stuff to help us um, solve this issue here. So let's start by, let's just print out some information that might be helpful for us. So we could say print position dot x. Alright, let's hit play let's see what happens here now at the bottom you can see that we have a number and this is our X number and you can see that the asteroid is moving so the X is starting to go down because it must be moving to the left and let's try it again so it was moving to the left so it started really high and then it started moving down so this time it's not moving left and right so much so the X is moving but it is moving to the right a little bit so the number is going up I'm gonna try again let's see what we got here and now it's moving to the right so that X is going up very quickly now let's see if we can get one and like maybe figure out where the edge might be so that one's not so great for the edge the last one was was actually pretty good so it keeps wanting to go up and down let's see if we can get it to move left or right okay so let's see somewhere ooh okay so up here this is our zero zero so if you'll take a look next to these um, bars here these little um, rulers we can see where the edge of our screen is so the far left edge for X is at 0 and the far right edge is at I don't know 1025 or so and then if we look at our verticals this is Y so we remember in go dot Y going up is actually negative so the top bound for our Y looks like it's somewhere around zero and then the bottom bound is somewhere around 600 so let's make some notes for ourselves here I'll come up here to the boundaries and we'll say 
um, our left bound and our right bound, those are both x. So I could say x, x. And we said the left bound was something like 0. And our right bound was something. Let's take a look. Let's check again. So this far side, I'm moving over here. See this little light blue line? Somewhere around 1,025. So it's probably 1024 if I had to guess. OK, so let's do 1024. All right, and our top and bottom bounds, those are going to be for the y direction. So we have y there, and we have y here. The top bound for y, that should be 0. Let's take a look and double check. So there's the 0. Right there is our top part. And then the bottom, 600. All right, so the top bound was 0, and the bottom bound, something like 600. All right, cool. Now, <clears throat> this is where we're going to want to use some type of if statement. Now, position.x is printing out the number of where the asteroid is on the x bound. We might also want to know the y bound so let's maybe put those two together so I can I've got the X and let's also print out the y all right so this is going to print our X and our y and I'll actually add a little space there so they're separated all right let's see what's happening here so we've got, now we have two coordinates. The x was our first one, and the y was our second one. All right, so now we want to make it where if this, if this one is too low, then we switch it to the other side, and, this, and that would be at this bound, 1024. Let's see if we can figure out how to maybe move our asteroid to a certain location. We could just say position dot, our position is equal to vector 2. And let's put it at 150, comma, 150. All right, so what this line is going to do, this is going to move our asteroid. And then I can put this one here. I can say this one prints out the asteroid's location. OK, so it's going to keep printing out the location. And this one's going to move it to a certain location. Now you got to remember, this movement calculation, that's trying to move it over and over. Um, move the asteroid. So when we first start the game, it's going to pick a random direction, motion, rotation, and it's going to try and move that direction every single frame. But what we're, what we're doing on my line 29 here is we're just putting it back at 150, 150. So if we play this, you should see the asteroid just move to that location, and it can, it can rotate but it can't move left and right because it keeps trying to put it back in the exact same spot. Okay, so we can move it. If I wanted to move it maybe farther to the right, I could change the x coordinate here. So I could say 350. That should move it over to the right hand side a little bit. So it's, it's to the right a little bit more. So I'm guessing Okay, so let's make some more notes here for us. So we have the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Let's go ahead and make an if statement that maybe does just for the left side. So we can say if position dot x, well, the far left 
is supposed to be 0. So if x is less than 0, we know that it went too far to the left. And then we're going to want to move it to the other side. So if position.x is less than 0, or maybe even less than the left bound, we could like put the number here so I could say 0. And if it goes too far out of the left bound, then we want to relocate the asteroid to the other side. So we'll say position dot x is equal to, and I want to put it on the right side of the map. So I will use this right bound. And what did we say the right bound was? 1024. 1024. All right. Um, let's, I'm going to comment out this line right here so we can let it move. And let's comment that one out because I don't want it to just print over and over and over again. So let's see what happens here. All right, it went up that time, so let's try again. It went to the right. Okay, so at this point, x is going to be greater than 1024, but we didn't set that contingency. We, we made one for it going off the left side of the screen. Let's try again, see if we can get it to go off the left side. Nope, that's to the right. Here we go, this one's going to the left. Let's see if it will pop up. It should pop out over here. Oh, there we go. So that works. I am going to leave you guys with that. I'm not going to give you any more than that. I think maybe you can figure it out. I'll pick up from here on the next video. And if you need more help, maybe you can just keep watching the or you can watch the next video. All right. See you in the next one.